Hello and welcome to the day ahead. It's Tuesday, July the 12th. I'm Nadine Blaney. Let's get straight to it and U.S. stocks lost ground. Wall Street closing lower as weary investors embarked on a week backloaded with crucial economic data. Market leading growth stocks pulled all three major U.S. stock indices into negative territory with risk off sentiment exacerbated by Macau shutting all its casinos for the first time in over two years in a bid to curb the spread of COVID-19. More than 30 zones across Hong Kong and Macau have been locked down with four rounds of mass testing scheduled for this week. Now the news sent U.S. casino shares plunging, Las Vegas Sands, Wynn Resorts and Melco Resorts all down over 6%. Meantime, Twitter tumbled in the wake of Elon Musk saying he's terminating his deal to buy the social media company. All eyes as well are on second quarter earnings season. Pepsi and Delta Airlines results are expected Tuesday and Wednesday ahead of the banks kicking in to end the week. It was a fairly quiet night on the data front, but we did hear from Fed speakers with Raphael Bostic reaffirming his view that the central bank should hike 75 basis points when it meets later in the month. He says he thinks the Fed funds rate could be hiked to 3% without causing a recession. Although not a current voting member of the FOMC, Bostic's comments echo a slew of Fed officials in recent weeks backing such a move. Futures markets have fully priced in a 75 basis point hike from the Fed this month with the market implying a 10% chance of a 100 basis point move, according to the CME's FedWatch tool. Across the Atlantic, and Bundesbank President Joachim Nagel spoke on the hot button issue of ECB bond buying overnight, saying he favors a scheme modeled on the one implemented during the European debt crisis. The statement comes as tighter financial conditions and political and economic turmoil in some parts of Europe increase funding costs for some countries within the bloc. Today here locally, we get NAB's monthly business survey. That's due at 11.30 a.m. Last month, confidence eased, but conditions remained strong. That and the monthly consumer confidence read comes ahead of the Aussie jobs report that's due on Thursday. In Australia, the jobs market seems to still be quite strong. I think it will still take another few months for any weakness to show up in the labour force because clearly some businesses, as you said, are still saying that they need more staff and also it takes people to adjust, it takes people a while to adjust their spending to higher interest rates. So I think it will take, I think the labour market will still remain pretty good and it will take a number of months to see some weakness uh, and maybe even some upside to the unemployment rate. Let's take a look at what we can expect from the local market today and the ASX 200 is expected to open marginally higher, up 0.3% after a pretty poor day, you've got to say yesterday. Global oil prices rose just marginally overnight with demand expected to drop amid that mass COVID testing in China. And that is really going against concerns over tight supply. Brent and WTI up marginally to 107 and 104 dollars per barrel. Again, that tension between lockdowns and supply continuing. Meantime, the iron ore futures price fell and demand destruction worries sent copper down close to 3% with aluminium down 2.4% base metals also hit by the soaring U.S. dollar. Gold futures edged slightly higher. And the Aussie dollar dipped from highs near 68.18. And that's where it's currently sitting this morning. In crypto, Bitcoin still fighting to stay above that 20,000 mark. And it's currently sitting just shy of 20,100, 20, I should say. Uh, today, look, there's not a lot on the corporate calendar as of yet, but we are seeing Metcash trade X dividend today. So a mildly positive open is in the forecast for the market. That's the day ahead. I'm Nadine Blaney. We'll see you tomorrow.